been a little negligent about uh, doing behind the scenes stuff, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to kind of give a peek at the scoring process here. Basically what we do is, um, backtrack here a little bit, um, we've got this project, Reaper project, we load it up and then what you get is this environment with a lot of tracks. I mean you've got, oh let's see, you got three tracks of dialogue, three tracks of ambience and foley which is going to be your your uh, footsteps and people moving around and that kind of thing. And then all these tracks here are um, all musical tracks. So I do have one kind of cheat thing I use where I've got a, there's a piece of music I licensed that has a bunch of, what I did was I took a bunch of samples of music and mapped them across the keyboard. So when I hit the key, so by hitting different keys, there's actually little musical segments that play. I'm going to say probably 15 to 20 percent of the score is comprised of those pieces and then in most cases what I do is I combine those with actual music I've created myself. So each of these tracks here are instruments like I need to turn that one off. Okay so here's some strings, you got a bassoon, uh, Uh, clarinet, all right, one thing that's been really handy is this, these pizzicato strings, that's a theme that comes up over and over again in the movie at different times. You got a little percussion here, things like this, it's kind of handy. For scenes that are kind of romantic or whatever, you might have a little piano. type of thing. Um, the brass are really nice, got some French horns. And if you want a little more aggressive brass down here we've got this. Okay, and of course every once in a while you need some timpani. So anyway, those are those are kind of the instruments that seem to keep coming up again and again. So in this particular scene, you've got a segment here, a short segment that's those samples I mentioned, and then it and then at this point right here it actually segues into all of these tracks, which are music I created to sort of inner work with the the sampled uh, music. Need some help with that? Jeez. Harry. I'm gonna turn the music up just a little bit high here. It's no big deal. Say, is that a Marantz? Ooh. Uh, yeah, um, it's all I could find. Yeah. I'm gonna stop right there and um, actually go ahead and mute the music and then show you this segment. Here, here's what it looks like without the music. Mind if I check it out? Sure. Hmm. Not bad. 1962. Huh? 62. That's the year the cassette was introduced by the Phillips Company. Now I should mention that all of the dialogue you're seeing here was redone in the studio. So initially, um, the camera audio is pretty awful and we replaced every line in the movie in the studio. So now I'm gonna give you the same scene with the music turned on. I'll give you the brief, this brief segment with the music off again, just so you can refresh um, what that felt, you know, felt like, sounded like, whatever. Mind if I check it out? And every once in a while the computer wants to freeze up a bit. Sure. That's life. Um, now we turn the music on. Mind if I check it out? Sure. Hmm. Not bad. 
I'm gonna turn the music. Nineteen sixty-two. Huh? Sixty-two. That's the year the cassette was introduced by the Phillips Company. Okay. Now huh? what I'm gonna do is uh, go ahead and turn that music back on. Sixty-two. Huh? Sixty-two. That's the year the cassette was introduced by the Phillips Company. Oh. I bet that... I bet that took forever to find. You have no idea. Let's hook it up. So you can see the music makes a big difference. So now I'm going to continue. Um, just kind of going one segment at a time here. That's the last one. I'll hit middle C on the keyboard. Um, which one C? Okay, so right there, this first section doesn't really feel like it needs anything. Um, but because this, this movie's kind of being what they call Mickey Mouse, where the music's really following the action pretty closely, almost like a cartoon kind of thing in some cases. In this case where Harry's confused, I'm thinking I want some kind of little clarinet thing. I'm using a lot of whole tone scales in this movie. A whole tone scale is like uh, every step in the scale has a whole step between it, which sounds like this. Very handy for scary type of sounds like. Um, and it, it tends to make the sound, the music sound like it really doesn't have a key center, which is kind of useful. The music becomes more of a texture than sort of a, a melodic element. So let's see, let's get this going again. Uh, hit middle and actually, I feel like the music, the, um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the clarinet up a little bit. It's at 36, I'm gonna turn it up to about 45. It feels like it's just a little bit quiet. I'll hit middle C on the keyboard. Um, which one C? I'll get it. Okay, just a little gentle button there, so. I'll hit middle C on the keyboard. Um, which one C? I'll get it. All right, just a little something for Harry there. Which one C? I'll get it. All right, and then it just kind of ends, so. so I'm which gonna, one C? I'm just going to sort of clean that up a little bassoon thing. Which one C? I'll get it. Let that fade out, you know, if that fades out. Which one C? I'll get it. Now, if I wanted to fade that bassoon more aggressively, I could put in an automation envelope, which is going to take, basically, I can take the point where I want it to fade out and kind of do that so that. I'll get it. And basically, by jumping from track to track, what I've found is I can knock out maybe, oh, in an hour, anywhere between one and three minutes of music, probably. Um, and that's once you find the the feel of the you know the movie you figured out the the themes and whatnot earlier in the process it takes a little longer but that's that's just a look at how the scoring process works